Vamos, okay. vamos, chicos. Oh, vamos, pues. <laughs> vamos. Ok. Coming to you live, or whenever you're listening to this, from the big, crazy town, Strathmore, Alberta. And I don't know if you've heard about it, folks, a little place called uh, Barcelona. Sí, se llama Barcelona. <laughs> se llama Barcelona, ¿verdad? Nuestro hombre, Marquito, en Barcelona, güey. Hablas, o tío, tío. No más. Tío, ¿qué pasa, tío? ¿Qué <laughs> tío, pasa, wey. tío? Yo, yeah, man. Dude. Guys, it's great to, to see you all again. Yeah, yes, it's been a minute. Been yeah, what, yeah. What's going on? What's going on with you? I think you got okay. All right, I'll start. I'll start. You, so, <laughs> so I've been here since Monday. So f uh, what, what's that? Like five days now? Five days? No, Tuesday. I landed Tuesday. Sorry. Um, and yeah, it's been great so far. It's been absolutely great. And the best part, like I just told Cody when you were away, Ian, is that this is the first time in like two days that I'm speaking English. <laughs> it's like, that's true you know, man it's true yeah a little, yeah podcast. exactly <laughs> no it's great it's great so i've been going hard at spanish and yeah, i just man. i just dove straight into it so like you know i'm at the so i work at a lab right here at the universitat de barcelona and um uh, speak spanish all day essentially and in then the you lab? know yeah in the lab just dabbing a little bit in catalan catalan yeah um catalan. Uh -huh. catalan um and uh then after work i either yesterday um uh, uh my my uh my colleague uh brought me out to a restaurant here in in a town north of barcelona se llama badalona badalona badalona, badalona. and badalona. we went out with his friends and we had some some classic um catalan food Okay. We had ourselves a, what, a genuine. We had a genuine um, Catalan experience. So <laughs> it included caracoles. Ooh, Vosotros caracol. sabéis que que es caracoles? I just know there's a great merengue song called Sopa de Caracol. <laughs> caracoles. That's Sopa snails. Caracol. That, that's snails, <laughs> boys. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, yeah. Okay. That's a delicacy snails yeah, and then man. what else did we have so like a big thing here is to have toasted bread with olive oil and you take uh -huh. a tomato yeah. and you kind of like brush the bread with tomato like you wipe it on there and then you have a little bit of salt and garlic and that's like a classic appetizer here so we have that as well so. and then wine like if you go to a restaurant you buy like the most expensive or like a really nice bottle of wine it's like max like 15 euros like it's nothing it's 15. like 30 it's like 25 bucks right yeah it's super that's a nice bottle for like a really nice bottle or you can go out you can get like a cheaper bottle for like five to ten euros uh so the wine is the the yeah the wine is super super cheap here um and yeah i've had a bunch of cervezas uh, hey. and it's okay. so funny so, so we, oh, yeah? we were speaking spanish all night and these guys <laughs> they made fun of me for having for my accent for my Latino That's accent. Close. For your like, Mexican accent? Yeah, like I accidentally said, come on, ahorita, a couple times. Uh -huh. And that, that's like, they found that super funny. And then obviously like how I, in the, like, I can't help myself sometimes when I'm on like autopilot. I use like, ustedes. Yeah. Every once yeah, in a while. Yeah. Cool. I use like, less instead of os, you know, stuff like uh -huh. that. And, and they think that's really funny as well. Uh, what else? And like, they don't like, they don't use the diminutive form at all here. Like, not at all. They, really? You never yeah. say, like, cafecito? Like, if I like say, that? like, cervecita, they're like, no, se dice cerveza. 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 So nothing, nothing is cute in Spain. No, nothing's cute in Spain. <laughs> <laughs> nothing's cute. And they say cojones all the time, which I think <laughs> is super funny. Uh, no, it's, it's great to be here. And a couple more things. So, first of all, the weather is amazing here. But another thing is that uh, I think I've seen the Spanish flag once. Yeah, man. I've seen the Spanish that's... flag once. And that's, that's, uh, uh, that's a tema un poco polémica. <laughs> un poco polémica. Sí. Polémica, if you guys oh. know what I'm saying. So it's, so it's controversial here because yeah. mm -hmm. cool. Barcelona is right now in Catalonia, which is a self-proclaimed independent nation. Correct. So what happened, what was this, 2017, something like that? Yep. Mm -hmm. So what happened in 2017 referendum? is that they had a referendum that, that, that passed, right, 
for for independence, independista. And and after that, the federal government here, the Spanish federal government, went in with um, La Guardia Nacional, uh-huh. so the, the federal yeah. police, and and they essentially, uh, what happened? They they um, they they broke down the independence movement, and all of the Catalonian politicians, uh, they they um, they fled. Like they fled the, yeah, they exiled they to fled. other parts of Europe. Yeah. Uh, so we're still a part of Spain here technically, but you don't see the Spanish flag. You just don't wow. see it. You're walking around on the streets and you see flags like this hanging everywhere. Everywhere. Man, it's From funny like you say the that. From and the windows. Right. Like all the Catalonian flag. Because mm-hmm. uh, I was watching, just getting, because we know we're talking about Barcelona today. So this morning on Netflix, I was watching uh, not that new messy barca 10 series one they just had a shorter documentary it's called barca oh. dreams oh and like even historically like when they were playing like uh so all the catalonia fans barca fans uh when they were playing like uh man united or any english team the they'd stand for the english national anthem but then the spanish national anthem would come on yeah and they'd all sit down yeah and then even yeah. to this no, day for sure. like yep. they'll jeer they'll jeer the or they'll have like whistles and booing. Um, yeah. Like wherever, where's the, what's it called where Barca plays? Camp Nou. Camp Nou. Camp Nou. Yeah. But I think so that's the like, Spanish pronunciation. I'm not entirely sure. I think it's like Camp Nou in, in Catalan. But I'm not so okay. sure. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. yeah. So, so the cool thing is that I work right next to that stadium. Like right, right. next to it. Wow. Which, which is really cool. So I walk by it every day. And and so there's been some 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 more polemica here because Messi is <laughs> not getting that. he's not getting along well with the president of Barca, so he so wants to leave. he wants to leave allegedly. But now his agent, which is his dad, has flown in from Ar- Argentina, and, <laughs> and they've been having some, they've been having dialogues together. So Barca and and I don't remember what his name is, but his dad, and I think they they might be able to convince him to stay. But there's been yeah. protests. There's been protests outside uh-huh. of, of Camp Nou. Uh, about him leaving? Because the fans, yeah, the fans don't want him to leave. Or I guess it's kind of split. Like I was asking some people about it, and some people are like, "Yeah, whatever, just let him leave." But, yeah. but obviously, there, there's a lot of sentiment there. There's a lot of um, history. He's been there since he was 13 years old. Right. And he's yeah, he's, he's a he's god playing. around here. He's a god god around here. So like, if you walk downtown, I. Um, I basically spent the day just biking around town today, and and mm-hmm. you see um, playeras de Messi, like uh, Messi soccer shirts all over, mm-hmm. all over the place, and, right. and uh, like every like all the all the advertisements are just Messi, like Messi's face and Messi's name. And oh God, yeah. So he's yeah. he's definitely like the symbol. Like he's definitely the, the face of this place. He's the yeah. face well, of this he's place. like the best soccer player in the world right yeah probably of all times yeah probably yeah. arguably there's you could argue that back and forth forever but that's probably the case so so he's the man um yeah no to be there else? like when this is all happening yeah, yeah 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 so that's interesting so so like one of the big things when i came here i decided that i wanted to get like a, a camiseta uh-huh. a, a shirt so I, i'm waiting to see i might get a messy one depending on if he stays or not but right uh but we'll see if he leaves and I don't want to walk around with a messy shirt, maybe everyone hates <laughs> yeah. his guts. But that's probably not going to happen. But we'll see. Uh, so yeah, walk man. around with a target on your back. Yeah, yeah dude. There are a couple more things. So I have a lot of things here. <laughs> yeah, man. So Spanish, they don't say español. Castellano, no? Castellano. 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 Siempre. Castellano. That's Siempre how you Castellano. distinguish it there. And, and they've been correcting me. Like every time I say español, no, no se dice español, uh, se dice castellano. Right. <laughs> yes. Castellano. Uh, yeah. So that's very important as well. So this, this, this is what this is what my friend told me. So, so here, español is like what they speak in South America and Latin America. That's español. Oh, and when then the French. Spanish person oh. is, is Castellano. Yes. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's how it works here. But they're very proud. They're very proud people. And if you just so obviously me, like I'm very interested in stuff like this. You just bring up Catalan versus Castellano. Like uh-huh. you ask one question and everyone, everyone is going to go off on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That reminds me of the Ukraine situation. When yeah. Lee was talking about like Russian 
and Ukrainian. I was I was curious if that'd be like a similar situation then. No, for sure. That it's people really passionate about like, the language. Very passionate. There? Very passionate. Right. Very passionate. And it's not like like you know, like most people here are not like crazy, um, like crazy independentistas. You have like crazy independentistas, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, that most people are like, you know, I don't really care if we're our own nation or whatnot, but I just want to have like some more. I want to, I want to be respected. I want to have more respect from the federal government and the rest of Spain because right now mm -hmm. yeah. they feel here like the rest of Spain is kind of they're suppressing them and they're trying to get rid of their language. Like the rest of the country yeah, right. doesn't like that they speak Catalan here. They don't like that. So like one thing is that they obviously, all their schools, like all their education, the primary and secondary education is in Catalan. Oh, and, okay. And, and other right. they, the rest of Spain doesn't like that. They don't think it's fair mm -hmm. because then, then they can't go to, to Catalonia and communicate. But I mean, like the people here have the attitude, like, okay, if you go to France, then you're going to study in French. If you go to Portugal, you're going to study in Portuguese. If you go to Germany, you're going to study in German, right? Uh -huh. So if you go to Catalonia, yeah. you're going to have your studies, all your studies are going to be in, Cat in Catalan. Uh -huh. So that's, yeah, that's their logic. And, it, and they, they see themselves as, as a nation, even though they're not technically independent, but they still have their own government. Right. You know? Yeah. Like they're patriotic to the, right. the Catalonian cause. The right. Catalonian. It's, it's kind of like, I think the, the, how the power, the division of power is similar to in Canada. So like, you know how like the, the provinces of Canada, like Alberta, they have their own provincial mm -hmm. government and whatnot that still yeah. has a reasonable amount of power. Yes. Like Kenny and the boys, they can do a lot of things, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny and the cronies. <laughs> yeah. If they want. So it's kind of the same thing here. So, so, you, so they still have a fair amount of autonomy, but you know, the federal government's still all, all over them. All the time, yeah. So. But like, yeah, I, I don't know a ton about Spanish history, but I know that like suppression of language there, like, that goes back to the Franco dictatorship. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, dude, yeah. it goes way back. Oh, way, well, yeah, way no, back. even further, but like this for a 20th century time frame, like that's the thing, like persecuted you, Catalan, Basque, Galician, like all the regional languages. Well, Spain. so, so it, it was a little bit more subtle as I understand it. So they sent, so the, 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 the Spanish government, they basically, they, they implemented incentives for, for people in Castilla, Castilla, mm -hmm. so is it Castilla or Castilla? Cast Castilla. Is that how they refer to? Yeah, yeah. So people, so that's like the Madrid area. Yeah. They they implemented incentives for them to move to, for example, Barcelona or right. Catalonia to to basically dilute the population yes. mm. with non Catalan yeah, yeah. Spanish speaking people, and a bunch of like little subtle things like this to slowly to slowly chip away at, at Catalonia's influence, right? And slowly right. chip away mm -hmm. at the Catalan language to try to get rid of it. But I mean, like Catalonia has always been like pretty revolutionary mm -hmm. within Spain because I know like before, like before Franco took over during the Spanish Civil War, that mm -hmm. was like that was one of the very few areas of the world in history where like an, like an anarchist government mm -hmm. has like taken over because that I think they were really they were working a lot with like the Republican forces yeah. and they that was like a big area of like revolutionary activity during the Spanish Civil well, War. Well, that's where George Orwell fought as a partisan. Yeah, yeah, well. lots of and like... he yeah. wrote homage to Catalonia. Yeah, lots of to read. lots of uh, Western people went to Catalonia to fight with the oh, Republicans. Brigadistas. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so... A lot of history there. A yeah. lot of history here. And it's not like in, in Canada or the U.S. where the history is only like 300 years old. Here it's, it's deep. Yeah, I know. So are you on the Diog Nam then? That's where your place is? Where? The no, 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 no. I'm not on Diagonal. Diagonal. Oh. I'm close though. I, I'm a 10 minute walk away from Diagonal. Yeah, yeah. But I'm very okay. central. I'm very central. Well, I saw because like, you sent that pic on the, the map, like the dot, and like you're pretty close to I'm uh, very close. I'm Sagrada ten, Familia too. So, no? um, that's a little farther. But I'm about a Is 10 minute okay. walk from no Diagonal idea. and about a, a 10 minute walk from Plaza Catalunya. Which okay. is where La that? Rambla, it's where it's a big square. It's like the main square of the city. And, and that's where La Rambla starts and then it goes down to the water. Dude. But, but yeah, man. I got to say, I love the architecture and the city planning here. It's oh, sick. 
first of all, the architecture, like absolutely insane. There's nothing you'd ever see in North America, obviously. But, but yeah. the, inf- the, the city planning is sick too, like how, how incredibly modern it is. So they've basically taken yeah. these huge avenues and turn them into, okay, you can still drive cars, right? So there's still roadways for, for vehicles, motorized vehicles, but they basically turn them into huge, um, I, don't know what, I, don't, I don't know what they call it, but it's like co-pedestrian. So, so there's oh, okay. huge uh, like um, strips that go through yeah. the avenues as well, where you can walk or bike or whatever. And there's specific bike lanes as well throughout the city where you don't share the road with anyone else. Just bike lanes. Just bike lanes. And this is yeah, everywhere. Yeah, that's awesome. It, it's sick. So, so there are not a lot, there are a lot of cars, but there's not an insane amount of cars like, like in North American cities. Like mm-hmm. picture yourself taking like the biggest, like uh, the biggest, av- like a really big avenue in New York City, cutting it in half for vehicles and turning the rest into like a park for people to walk. Right. That's how it, that's how it works here. And, and yeah, so they divide it into a pedestrian way, a large pedestrian way, and obviously bike roads and then the car roads is significantly diminished, but you don't mm-hmm. want to drive here in Barcelona. Like no one drives here. Everyone right. either has a, a moped, a small motorcycle, bikes or walks. And the Metro mm-hmm. is sick as well. The Metro is huge. It's super modern, uh, very yeah. well developed. So I don't know. It's it's a great city to not have a car. Yeah, for sure. And it's like Super green everywhere, friendly. for sure. And there's there's you know there's trees everywhere. Yeah, palm man. trees and regular trees and whatnot. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful, and you can feel the air quality is so much better than than Calgary's pretty good, but like like Toronto, for example. Yeah. Air quality mm. is so much better here in the city because of that because there's not a lot of cars, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Oh. So, like, what's your impressions of the people that in Barcelona? They're great. Because obviously course, everyone speaks great. Spanish. Or sorry, Castellano. Castellano, exactly. And right. Catalan. Uh, so, so, so here's, here's the you thing. You just go up and start speaking, obviously, Castellano. Yeah, I speak Castellano. So everyone is, is incredibly fluent and, or incredibly uh, bilingual, right? So there's, they're, right. they're essentially as fluent in Castellano as any other person in Spain, right? As any yeah. person in, in Madrid. And obviously they're fluent in, in Catalan as well, the people that are actually from here. But there's a lot of immigration as well. So mucha gente de, de Sur America, por ejemplo. So a lot of oh, South see. American people. Yeah, so like the, the lady that sold me my phone or my, my SIM card, she was, I don't know where she was from, but it was either like just telling from her, by her, like from her accent, she was from Colombia, Venezuela, or some part of Southern. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the southern caribbean and what about english like how is the english level there i have no idea <laughs> no like, no like entiendo English. Way. Uh, i i think it's, it's yeah, good. good yeah i think it's good but i don't know like i really don't know because i haven't spoken english no, like, like on like so public like transport english. stuff yeah. like oh like, no english like there's no signs in english Really? Like set, well, well, so like in the when you get into like the super touristy areas, like when you go down to La Rampa, yeah. for example, huh. there's signs. There's like everyone like certain signs are in English, so it's like that, Catalan, huh. Spanish, and English. But like throughout the rest of the city, no, there's no English. That surprises me because why like, is that surprising? In, even in a place like yeah. China, like everything is in Chinese and English. Even in the small cities, like there's like English on all the signs. What really? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah not, like that's I was like, the case, when I was right? in Vienna, man, like Vienna had a ton of English. So like a maybe there's more English than I realized because I, I don't look for it, but there's definitely signs in English in the tourist areas. Yeah. Okay. But but when I would like to the, all the restaurants that I've been to, there's no like when you get the menu, nothing's in English. Oh really? Oh yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, for sure. Yeah, it's even different from like Slovakia then because. Right. Slovakia. But here's the thing. I don't know where you went in Slovakia because I, I imagine if I go down, so I haven't been to a very touristy, touristy restaurant. I've only been to like some yeah. restaurants. That, yeah, no, for sure. That are in, in like the yesterday, the one in Badalona or the one up around uh, where I work. And they're like smaller ones, not super, in, in, not in super touristy areas. But I, I bet, I bet there's a fair amount in English. I just haven't seen it yet. Oh man, that's good. So what, did you have that first taxi ride? Like you were talking about no, last podcast? My, my, uh, my, my, supervisor, oh, deal. my, 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 <laughs> my, my boss here is my supervisor here. He actually picked me up from the airport. Oh yeah. 
uh, yeah. So no, I didn't have that first tax year, unfortunately. <laughs> but I've had a lot of those experiences where I'm like, brother. I'm just, I'm just super pumped about speaking oh, Spanish. Man. So, yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. So it's how's like, the how's the job like? It's fantastic. What, what have you done so far? It's fantastic. So I work in a lab. I work mm-hmm. in a lab, and these mm-hmm. guys are. As, arguably the best at what they do in the world arguably like they're very they're very uh they're very talented all of them work very hard and um and it's been super good i'm learning a lot when it comes to that but i mean this this podcast is not about (laughs) engineering stuff it's about language but the the best part about the job is that the (laughs) people this is this this is relevant um um so, so this, this lab where I'm working right now, they usually have a lot of international students, mm-hmm. but they all, they're all gone now. And the international students that are supposed to arrive can't come, mm-hmm. essentially. They, they either can't yeah. come or they don't want to come yeah. uh, for obvious reasons. Our causa de COVID. But, yeah, uh, well, so, guess, so it's just yeah. me and, and two people from, from, from Catalonia, two Catalan people. And it's great, right? And it's great because... Cause, uh, obviously and they're they're both of them are very uh, open and and talkative and helpful so so yeah, um yeah it's, well, yeah, it's, so I'm, yeah well i just gonna ask like the question you gotta ask everywhere now like how is the covid like <laughs> measures there like it's annoying it's very, i think i find everywhere. it very annoying because they make you wear a mask outside everywhere oh Ooh, yeah outside. some places so are like that, yeah. that that was a thing with the u.s oh, as well so i was in the u.s for two weeks and they love their masks, love them. And it's almost, it's so weird there. It's so weird. Like I was out hiking. People wear masks when they're hiking and like running even, even if it's not mandatory. Yeah. Even if it's not mandatory, but mind you, I was in a very, uh, I was in, I was in Vermont and Massachusetts. So in Massachusetts, Massachusetts is like Barcelona. You're actually, you have to, like, if you go out for a run, you have to wear a mask. Like they're very anal about it because they, they had, they got hit pretty hard in March. But, I uh, actually, I heard, I was reading that Spain is, might be having another, like, a, there might be a second wave hitting Yes, you know? yes, but, it, so I was talking to people about this, so first of all, there's, there's absolutely no increases in, in mortality, there's zero increase right. in mortality, like, the mor- mortality curve is essentially zero. I was talking mm-hmm. to my, my uh, a family friend of ours, who I had coffee with, he's a doctor, he works at the hospitals, and he said the ICUs are very calm very very calm even even though the the cases have gone up so a couple of theories are that one they're just testing more right so Mm -hmm. if they test more then they're going to find more cases two now like all the old people are are very cautious they stay inside so so the average age of contagion has dropped significantly and the people that are getting sick don't die they they just get sick right and uh and what else? I guess they've gotten good at treatment. But, but so people are fairly calm here, even though cases have gone up a lot, but people are still mm-hmm. very calm. Okay. But in terms of like getting into things, like say as a tourist and bars and restaurants, like that's it's all, it, just like Canada. Same so it's, measures, it's just like same Canada. as everywhere. Same as, same yeah. as everywhere. Yeah. But, but the annoying thing is like, if I'm biking, I don't want to wear a mask. Or if I'm running, yeah. I don't want to yeah. wear a mask. And it's really hard to, to breathe through these surgical masks, right? yeah dude for sure at least that's what i find so so that's a little annoying um okay and the the science doesn't really um the science doesn't really support that you know like it does like i get inside but outside like if you have natural convection natural Uh the aerodynamics of air is just gonna blow away the virus particles yeah exactly (laughs) i don't know i don't sometimes i don't get it but people are good at social distancing here for sure Totally, man. For sure, and, uh, but but uh, I don't know. I th- I think Canada has a more pragmatic approach to it. Okay. So uh, so what? You got some weekend trips planned here? Let's oh, I was gonna go to Madrid fast. tomorrow, but I'm a little tired. I think I'm just gonna go down. Madrid, to you? I might push it a week. I might go next week instead. Um, I might go next week instead. I think I'm just gonna go down yeah, to man. the beach tomorrow and chill out. What's oh, the? Yeah. So is it? Would you bus or train? Like what's no, the way I to bike, get around? Bike. To Madrid? What? No. <laughs> <laughs> to the beach. Yeah. To the beach, dude. dude. I'm talking about Madrid, bro. Oh, oh, to Madrid. Uh, so the, obviously, the cheapest way to, way is to fly. 
you know, you can find Ooh, a, a fly. How far is Madrid from Barcelona? Uh, an hour and a half flight. An hour Wait. flight. An hour and a half. Oh, an hour flight. And a flight? flight, really? Yeah, an hour and a half, I think. Mm-hmm. Maybe an hour. Maybe it's an hour. So it takes like nine or ten hours to drive there. Yeah. I don't know, but it takes two yeah. hours and 45 minutes with a bullet train or with a high speed train. So I really okay. wanted to do that because I've never been on a super high speed train like you have here. Oh, it's so much fun. I have been on several. I've been like in Germany, Japan and China and high speed trains. That's what those are one of my favorite forms of transport. It's mm-hmm. so cool. Like yeah. when you're especially when you're um, going past highways. And it looks like all the cars on the highway are standing still. Like, oh, yeah. it's just so cool. Yeah, these things go up to 400 kilometers an hour, I think. Or it's like 300 and something, which is sick. So I, I really want to do that. And it's it's not too expensive. It's it's more expensive than flying, for sure. But it's only like $200 round trip to Madrid with high speed. Tren de alta velocidad. Yeah, man. Oh, dude. Do that. But but also oh, wow. another trip. So I have a bunch of trips planned, right? Yeah. Uh, and not, I want to go to Valencia. Valencia. <laughs> so uh-huh. speaking of languages, they speak they speak something else down there. So it's it's essentially uh, Catalan, but okay. you know, like here in Spain, we're all very uh, we're all very uh, regional. There's a lot of regionalism mm-hmm. here, and we're all very nationalistic right. and patriotic yeah. to our regions, right? Like Basque so, country, same thing. Right? Yes, but that language is actually different. That's like Portuguese. Oh, Basque is way different. Yeah, way right. Different. It's like an isolated language. Yeah. Yeah, but um, no, I was thinking of Galicia. Like in Galicia. Well, that's, really, that's like a romance language. Yeah. No, Galicia is Portuguese, essentially, but they call it something else. Y- yeah. Uh-huh. They, ca- they call it something else Galicia. just, Gallego? just because, because they want to have their own thing. They want to, yeah, Gallego, exactamente. Gallego. Um, uh-huh. But they want to have like their own thing, right? Same thing in Valencia. They speak Catalan, but like with a slight dialect, and then they just, they just call it something else, just uh-huh. because they're they're patriotic to their gotcha. their nation, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like it's like going it's for it's like for, for a Mexican to go down to like, or it's like you know how there's differences uh-huh. in, in in Latin America. Yeah, like it's, like for, or... it's like it's like for Costa Rica to call themselves coast or to call their language Costa Rican or something yeah, like yeah. that, right? Totally, so, totally. Right, because it's yeah, essentially man. the same language, just a slight difference, and they call it something else. Yeah, so I yeah. want to go down there. You can do that. Um, I would love to go to Galicia, but mm-hmm. it takes forever because you got mm-hmm. they don't have a, a high-speed train, and you got to change in Madrid, I think, or something like that. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do it or not, but I'm definitely going to drive up to the Pyrenees rent the car and drive up to the to mm. and, and Andorra and, and go into mm-hmm. France as well. Oh, yeah. So Andorra, they speak Catalan too, no? No, they, their French? official language is, is Catalan. Oh, them too. Okay. Oh, I should know. Word, man. Wait. So you said you're going to go to France. Are you planning on going to any other countries as Marseille? well? Marseille? Uh, um, well, we'll see, hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. Uh, but but I want to I want to get into France and, and uh, try out my French Oh yeah, uh-huh. that'd, be, that'd be, be so sure. fun. Yeah, be sure. uh-huh. that'd be super fun. Uh, that'd be Dude. super fun. But Andorra as well, and the Pyrenees are pretty cool. The Pyrenees, Absolutely, the mountains, man. right? Uh, yeah. And you guys know as well. They speak they speak Catalan in southern France. So yeah, what? I yeah, because if you look on a map, like traditional yeah, Catalonia territory and uh, Sardinia. Sardinia, right? Or is it Corsica? No, I don't know. One of those. those? One of those. One of those islands. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The islands. I think it's Sardinia. Yeah, it's a cool place to be. It's it's a it's a sick place to be. Ah man, like, because yeah. So in terms of like going to actual Barca game, is this their off season right now? Well, they're supposed to start now, but they just ended because they had their their COVID and the whole COVID postponement, right? So I'm not entirely, I haven't looked into it. I haven't looked into it. But what they think, what I think they're going to do is to to, uh, allow fans again, but only like 30%. Gotcha. Which is still 30, over 30,000 people. Uh, Yeah. The same, man. In these stadiums, (laughs) right? It's over 30,000 people, which is kind of sketchy, but it's still only 30%. Right. Yeah. These stadiums are sick. The only thing that compares to it in North America are like uh, college football games. Right. 
Yeah, yeah. For like crowd craze. Yeah, dude, that's crazy. Oh, I've crazy. never understood that about the United States. Like that the craze behind college football. Like why? Love it, man. Ian gets it. Ian gets it. love hockey. They love it. Yeah. Just yeah, your region I, where I you're it, from, yeah. man. Oh, cool, man. Yeah, I know. So, that's, uh, yeah, that's the way the culture is. So soaking up Barca. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. you know, like it's so fun to study languages when you can just go out the door and apply it. It's, oh, so it's right yeah. there, right? It's, it's so right fun. there. It's so fun. We are out both so envious like, of you. <laughs> like, you guys obviously know this feeling, and it's it's the best. So I'm gonna go. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. start playing around with because I'm dabbling right now in in Catalan, right? Of course. So course. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start to to apply it as well, little, little by little, you know. Oh, and I think like comprehending. I was like this morning because I just Catalan on my mind. I put on some like YouTube Catalan and the girls speaking, and uh, it's like in Catalan and then like English beneath. But even when she's talking in Catalan, man, like you, especially when you see it written out, you understand it all. Basically, uh, essentially, just, it's a yeah, matter of yeah. pronunciation. Like, okay, to be so a speaker of it would be harder, but I think understanding it for yourself is going to be way easier. Like, initially, for sure. It, yeah, it's I, so similar. You've on sword on. It's definitely a different language. So, like, when people, you can yeah, no. tell immediately when someone's speaking Catalan, right? Because you don't really sure. understand what's going on. Yeah. But you can sort of, you can sort of get the contacts sometimes yeah. if people are speaking clearly. Um, totally. but, 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 but a thing that that's interesting right now is that it's harder to understand people when everyone's wearing a mask, mm. <laughs> much harder, yeah. right? Yeah. Have you guys noticed this? Like be, just, yeah. just in English, right? Like going to, going yeah. to Timmy's or something like that, ordering something you like, it's really hard to hear what the other person's saying sometimes. Yeah. Even voice projection through a mask. Is it's like, different. It's different. And it's also, holes, right? yeah. When you can see like how the, the mouth is moving of the other person. It's much easier to understand yeah, what the person's yeah. saying as well. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that's really interesting because Ian, you just mentioned voice projection through a mask. So, how's teaching going for you? Yeah, I'm back in yeah. the classroom, man. What's going on, dude? Yeah, how's that? How's it's that fun, going? man? It's been. I've been actually just super happy. It was a great first week back. Uh, I saw on Cody. They came over today. It kind of like reminds you of like what your purpose is, like what you're actually doing in yeah. life why you're getting Jeez. paid <laughs> yeah yeah because you, exactly. you've been off of work for like almost six months right well like <laughs> face to face like we still yeah, call yeah, online yeah, yeah, yeah. but no nah, man it's been cool like i have to i got a grade 10 french and a grade 10 spanish class it's just like the first days and i just like kid walks in the na kid walks in the room uh like we have all these the like, health protocols too kids gotta wear masks sanitize they're at their desk facing forward they don't have to wear it other than that um they do but besides all like the health protocols and all the sanitation stuff they just walk in the room be like tu nombre tu nombre like mi nombre señor reñor tu and then like just espanol right off the hop man nice nice just Wait, trying to make like these easy wins um yeah it's been kind of nice too we've, like the first few days we've been splitting the kids so, like a to k last names come one day then l to z last names come the other day so it's actually as a smaller because next Thursday they'll, they'll all be together, but I've actually gotten like smaller classes. Kind of reminds me when I was an ESL teacher having right. like smaller right. classes. And you got you learn names way quicker. Uh, kind of like make a connection. But dude, yeah, you know, I've been feeling like just been in the groove. Like it's it's the early stuff, the preliminary stuff, like the housekeeping part of teaching the first few days. But uh, just trying to like it's not an immersion classroom. I technically teach in second language, so. Um, but yeah, man, just, it's been fun. Everything is in Spanish been, though, right? Yeah. Like, I'd say, like, I mean, if a student was here, I, I think they'd agree like 80 to 90%. Right. That's awesome. So, so how's the Spanish level of these kids? Uh, good, man. Like, uh, like, kind of like, cause, uh, like some, they've only taken one semester and then they don't take it this next semester. So then now they're back. So they got to knock a bit of the rust off. Right. But uh, like I've talked about the show, you got to hit those cognates. Like you just pound those and like, ah, then like, oh, it starts to come back to them. And you right, see right, things right. that are uh, doing, but then it just making it fun, man. Like you got to be just, I find a lot of being a language teacher, like I have like, it's like I highly respect stand up comedians that can react to things, like situational yeah, yeah, things. Yeah. Because as a language teacher, like something happens, it's like, okay, yeah. like how can I create a language <laughs> moment out of this? Yeah. And like, 
yeah, you can just everything like some kid like where where's like what's the pencil sharp? You're like El saca puntas? Like El saca punta? Electronico or no electronico? <laughs> oh, El saca punta está allá, está allá, otra parte. Ah, yeah, you're like pointing. You're just like every little thing, man. Just like don't don't spare. So uh, Ian, Ian, are moment. you gonna are you gonna teach them vosotros this year or no? No, no. You can come, <laughs> you can come guess. You can come give a guess <laughs> guess lesson on vosotros. Yeah, vosotros. yeah, when I come back, I'll, I'll like, do it. I'll be like doing conjugations on the board, and I'll get to vosotros, and I'll be like, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, just, you're not no vosotros this. here. Yeah, this is no, America. This is, uh, yeah. <laughs> America. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, it's a good That's energy. So funny. It's good to be back. It's so funny how like we speak Latino Spanish in Canada, and like that's how we teach our kids <laughs> right. how to speak Spanish. Well, like just think about when's the last time you met a Spanish person here in Calgary? Well, it was that guy? What, I what was his name? Guy, oh. oh, that oh, one guy from that one um, guy. Oh, um, I don't remember his name now, but Ali's see, but see, there you go. It's it's that one guy. It's not like <laughs> one of the people that you've met. Yeah, yeah. demasiados mexicanos. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fun. Yeah. yeah man. Yeah, that's super funny. But that's sick, dude. So what about French? What's the, is that the same level as, is that second semester as well or no? Uh, so right now I have, yeah, two French classes, two Spanish classes. So I have one class that's a combination, uh, grade 11 and grade 12 French. So there are you. Uh, I, I taught half of those kids last year too. So they kind of know my teaching style. And um, So what's the level? Everything in French uh, as well? Yeah, like try it. Yeah, like even admittedly, like I think I've talked about it before. Like I don't, my flow in French sometimes isn't as spontaneous and uh, yeah, because like your quick. Spanish is much better than your French. No. Yes, correct. We were also talking but, about that though, like the fact that Spanish just seems to flow much more naturally than yeah. French does. That's because we've done it more, obviously. Yeah, no, and I was no say, not even that uh, though. It's I don't just know. the feeling of the language. No, but if it, you it guys are French, you'd be very fluid. Uh -huh. And then, I think that's what I, I put the onus on myself. So, like, lots of inner French lately with Hugo. Because I find, like, as a language right, so you're teacher, going you're, hard. Yeah, like, if you're, like, really good, and then you just got to, like... But my goal is, like, I want to speak A1 to these kids. Like, imagine being fluent just in A1. So, you're just... You're keeping things as basic as possible, but still, they're comprehending. You're comprehending. Because I feel like anytime you've made the student too confused, you failed. As a language teacher, yeah. So maybe you can talk to that too, like exactly. the Italki sessions. Mm -hmm. So it's just yeah. like I want them to be comprehending, like following. They don't have to like, even if they respond to me in English from something I said in Spanish, that still meant they understood it, right? So yeah, like the level is still basic, but like it's only been a couple days so far with each set of kids. So, mm -hmm. but even it's super fun now. And I like, I give a presentation about myself the first day to the French ten and the Spanish grade 10 class and like it's all in those languages and they can just like start to see things like oh like i understand this yeah and I just like give give the student easy wins easy wins right because that's yeah, like right. it just build confidence i'm like because i'm just trying to be like what kind of language teacher would i want if i was like walking into like i don't know like an italian class kind of thing like how would i want the teacher to, be, right, to, right, me, right. to make me understand as much right. as possible but uh, yeah, man, it's sweet. It's cool being like a full-time language teacher. Like I could just be in language mode all day. Mm -hmm. That's sick. Okay, yeah, sir, that's what it's been like, like for me own. lately too. Right, Cody. Yeah, yeah, yeah let's hear it, dude. Cody, let's hear it. Yeah, man. Oh, I, I'm, it's like it's it's funny. I'm like I'm still. This is only my second month of doing this, and I feel like I'm st I'm like in experimentation mode because like when I first started, I had ideas of what it was going to be like, like just teaching online all the time. And of course, it's not what I'm used to. Like, I'm used to like being in a classroom, like having somewhat of a curriculum. But it's like a, teaching on Italki. It's like a total sandbox. Oh, like it's yeah. just whatever you want to teach. That's mm -hmm. what you're teaching. And I've been slowly taking more and more advantage of that. And so, for example, like some ideas of like kind of lessons that I've been doing with students is like. I think my favorite one so far, just because I love geography and I love maps, is that. I've been, especially with like for, for students for conversational English, I'll get them to, uh, to show me around their hometown on Google Maps. And I'll also do one where I show them around uh, Calgary and Southern Alberta oh, like and Edmonton that. and things like that. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's turned out to be like so much fun. Like all the students really enjoy it every time. Like 
Um, and I can tell, especially like when they talk about their hometown, like they get so passionate about uh, the things to see in their city and also like the, their pl favorite places like that they, that they like to go mm -hmm. to. And um, yeah, and another really interesting thing about iTalk is that if every student is just so different, like every class is radically different from one another. Like I had, when I first started, I had like these, um, I guess, frameworks that I thought I would need to use. I'd be like, okay, for this level, like my classes are going to be like this, but that has not been the case at all. And it turns out that I need to just discover what every student's needs are, mm -hmm. what their personality's like, their mm -hmm. level of their language. And I need to base everything around that and customize everything. Right. So it's been super interesting to experiment around with. And I think, um, yeah, every week I'm getting better at it. And I think the students are starting to notice that too. Like I'm starting to get more comfortable with teaching online. And it's, yeah, it's just, it's just going really well. So. so Cody, what languages are you doing primarily? Oh, it's, it's vast majority English, like it's probably 75, 80% oh. English. And then yeah. what? And, and then German. German. Yeah. Deutsch, which surprised uh, me. I thought it would be Spanish because Spanish is Deutsch super Deutsch. popular for English speakers, but um, yeah, it's, it's been a vast majority English. And then okay. other than that, a f quite a few for German. And then a couple for Spanish, no Chinese. And there's nothing. Okay. Oh, nothing for Chinese. That makes yeah. Sense. Boys, I'm gonna grab another be lucky. Yeah. yeah no, okay. No, no problem. No. So, <laughs> that's super interesting, though. Okay. So what about Cody? What about your own personal language learning? How's that going? Yeah. Um, update us. Update us. Well, I'm not gonna go into depth on this, but my personal life has been kind of hectic and turbulent lately. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, my my language <laughs> learning. Pardon? Never mind. Keep going. Oh, oh, I did. No, no, it, no. But I'm seriously, like, especially lately, it's been crazy. So. Yeah, but you go hard socially all the time. <laughs> yeah. Cody, so, by the way, Cody describes himself as an extremely extroverted person. <laughs> I might right? have to tone that down. I, I might be burning myself. Might up. Be. So. <laughs> okay. it yeah, I my language learning has not mm -hmm. been great lately. So I haven't been really, I, I've been doing as much as I can, but I haven't had a lot of time to learn Korean. So um, in the next few weeks, I'm going to be refocusing my attention on that. And mm -hmm. hopefully I'll be able to start making some serious headway there. Cause I, like after, I think um, I want to get through the winter and, uh, which in Canada is over half the year. <laughs> so I've got a lot of time, um, but I want to like actually be at a, like a decently, like I want to be able to have like hold a conversation comfortably in Korean, which I definitely cannot do right now. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's how that's going. How about, um, I mean, you've already talked about yours. So Ian, how about you? How's your, how's your yeah, language? Yeah, uh, it's coming in like now being back at work. So it's like, okay, how can I like really fit this into the routine? And right now, because we were gonna do Korean War 2.0 in November, I think we decided that's gonna we're gonna push that back to like a whole year now. Yeah. But that's been that's been all right. Cause uh, I've been just deciding I want to. Today will be my 19 day Pimler streak. Pimsler streak I'm on right now for Good. Korean lessons. So that's been oh sweet. nice nice. So just to have. But then also I was like okay along with that I'm gonna do one talk to me in Korean lesson a day as well. So just one of those. And then uh, just for, cause I got the time, I really like these bite-sized language lesson podcasts. I've been doing one a day of a uh, Ukrainian lessons podcast. I can mention that last episode. And then also, uh, cause German's like my big, big goal. Like I want, I basically want to be you Marcus where you are, but in Germany in a couple of years. I hear um, you bud. That, so I've been actually my lunch hours right now at school. Because nice. like lunch hours are all weird and staggered. Um, like grade 11s go 15 minutes earlier than grade 10s and 12s or whatever. So it's kind of, there's not like a ton of other teachers to socialize with. But anyway, I've just been uh, working on the, if anyone's heard of it, it's called Helft Harry Learn Deutsch from Deutsche Welle, which is mm -hmm. a sweet 
cool. It's like, I, I kind of like storytelling language learning. Like it's just about this guy that's like really reluctant. Yep. That's what's so good about Pimsler, right? Cause it's, it's kind of like a right. story. There's a narrative. Kind of, but this is like really, really, there's oh. characters, the guy's girlfriend's left him, he's in like a time warp, and oh. he's meeting all these people, and like each episode is like eight minutes long, and then there's, there's like this narrator talking to him, and then like the German just gets advanced and advanced, like wow. each lesson. It's a really cool sick. like story to like, because you're like, you're like legit interested in what happens to this dumb character, Harry. You're going to have to show character. me that. Like, yeah, it just uh, if people are interested, podcast or it's also like a video series where it has like all the dialogue in German's like written out. So what I've been doing at lunch hour is actually there's transcripts of Health Blair Harry Learn Deutsch, and I just copy and paste the phrases that I don't quite know, put that into memorize, uh, put the Google Translate and get the English, and then plug that into like making my own memorize courses is like my favorite hobby so oh yeah um yeah man so that's kind of that and then other than that like i have a whole dabbling regime that i like to do in a bunch of other languages but uh <laughs> that's the sideline but before you talk about that um uh, deutsche Welle actually deutsche Welle. has another series like that well they have a lot yeah, deutsche Welle yeah. is great mm -hmm. great it's yeah i'm actually using that to, like to help um some students oh, get started learning gotcha. german i use yeah man. i use nico's vague have you seen oh, them? It's from Deutsche Welle? Yeah, it's also oh, similar. Yeah, I've, I've seen that. I've seen all yeah. of those. Yeah, yeah. Like the short they video clips? Great. No, I've wa I watched the long ones, like yeah. the actual movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? That's super, yeah. That, yeah, that's super good, too. Yeah, so that, because I think like some of these language resources that are specifically tailored to the one language they know, I'm a big fan of those. Oh, yeah. But, like, yeah, it's where you can get that comprehensible input, man. Whatever, whatever resource it is. So an so. interesting thing about Catalan is that uh -huh. the vast majority of all resources are in Spanish. Right. Which I is great, right? Which right. is great. Yeah. Because I'm doing both at the same time. That's what I love to do. Like <laughs> when I do Duolingo in anything, I do it from yeah. Spanish to that language, right? So all new uh, languages. Yes, great, yeah, great method. To all listen. new romance languages that I learn. I only learn romance languages right now at least, but they're all yeah. from Spanish. Great way. And it's so easy. Like, Catalan is so easy. Everything, yeah. ha it, like, it has the same structure as Spanish. Oh, absolutely, dude. Like, yeah. estoy aprendiendo catalán. That uh -huh. translates into estic aprenden catalán. Uh -huh. yeah. Catalá. Uh, Disculpa. Catalá. Como, I like, the, like I it's the same. So, estoy is a stick. Como está? Como está? No, it, it's como como está. Estás? Como estás? Como estás? Is it como estás? It's como, okay. como estás, no como, oh. como estás. Como estás. Como estás. Yeah, yeah, it's like, it's like a little shortened version of it. Yeah, it's like a little shortened. A little staccato. But a lot of people here say like, que tal, que tal. Que tal, yeah, So, yeah. but that's, that's so interesting. And like another thing, so for example, um, like to speak, hablar es parla. Parla. Como, como francés, no, no. right? It's parla. Yeah. Parla. So, so you, like, you say like, I, I, Yes, exactly. But so, yeah. and then that's another thing. You, it's like French for all the verbs. So it's spelled parlar, but you drop uh -huh. you drop the R. So it's just like French. You drop the R with all the verbs. So it'd be like right? parlo, parlo. Or like yo. Parlo, sí, parlo. parlo. And then and obviously you obviously like Spanish. You drop the pronoun pronoun as well. So it's yeah. parlo, mm, parlo sure. catalán. Sure. Yeah. Parlo like even... una mica de catalán. Una mica. Yeah. That's uh, un poco. Parlo, parlo una mica de catalán. Oh. Yeah, or uh, somos is som. Because like in Barcelona, that documentary is like yeah. som Barça. Som, som Barça, som Barça. Som Barça. Yeah. But, yeah. So, but like I, yeah. I just find like, like estoy is a stick. I just found, yes. find that so cool. <laughs> and like, and like puedo is puk. 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 <laughs> yeah, man. Puk like, parla think... una mica de catalán. Uh -huh. That's sick, man. I love is this. this. Short, like, I think pan I is pa. If I'm correct. Okay. Pan, like, pan is pa. Yeah, pa. I believe. Pa. So, so and then bread, vino, bread. vino is just v. V. Yeah, that might be right. I know, I know like pan is pa. List, I know pan is yeah, pa. Yeah, just from a little dabbling on memorized. I love it, dude. I love it. Dude, I man. love it. You're yeah. five days in, bro. Yeah, like yeah. But I'm really just starting with Catalan right now. I'm really just starting with Catalan right now. But, yeah. but I think. We'll see how this goes, but I, I'd love to get into a, like a conversational level as, at least, you know, that'd be so Dude. fun. 
Have you looked up any like meetup situations there? Uh, so, so what I'm thinking about actually, cause it's still a little sketchy meeting up with people, right? Okay. Like yesterday I was out with like four guys, but it was all like, we yeah. were sitting outside and whatnot, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. And I kind of, they were all like very, um, they were all well demeanored. So to, yeah. so, to okay. so to speak, but, um, but I don't know. I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little sketched out by like hanging out too much with other people. But if you could like yeah. keep a close group, whatnot, that that'll be cool. And it's hard to. I don't think meetups are are running right now. I don't think meetup as a platform is going to allow any meetups to, to yeah. happen. I'm not sure. In Barcelona? Oh, uh, in general, or like, what's the policy of meetup right now? Meetups are happening here. Oh, they are. So what's the policy though? Because like, does meetup have a say? Uh, I I don't know, but mm. I I think. They're encouraging people to socially yeah, distance and wear encouraging. masks. I, oh, okay. I, I, okay. So they're I, not like governing things. Yeah. All right. Maybe, maybe I'll look into that. But what I was thinking about is actually doing some italki lessons. Uh, Even though, I mean, like I have all these resources like in Barcelona, but I mean like, why not do a little bit of Catalan? And I mean, it'd be yeah, cool to talk it. to someone else in Barcelona, even if it's through the computer oh yeah man right totally. but then also like when i'm in when i'm at work like i can i can shoot the shit right with yeah the people there but it's you know they don't want like it's it's still arduous for them to sit with me and like go like it's better to have like yeah. a teacher sometimes to like right be your language yeah. mommy <laughs> yeah, yeah. And actually this is something that's becoming very apparent to me as a as a teacher on i talk yeah. is like it it's like it makes like so much of a difference when you're sitting for like an, a dedicated hour with a teacher, just like mm -hmm. going over how to say things and how to make mistakes. Cause I was like, yeah. usually by the end of a class, I'm like, Oh my God, like we talked about so much. And like, I fixed, a, I fixed a lot of their mistakes and like I taught them a lot of new expressions or ways to say things. And like, that's just something you don't experience when you're just like casually talking with a friend mm -hmm. or someone you just yeah. met. Like right. having a teacher and like having that dedicated time is so helpful. So like, yeah, exactly. So like when I hang out with people here, like they obviously don't have the patience or maybe even the audacity to point out yeah. my mistakes, even though I obviously make mistakes all the time, especially yeah, right. after a, a couple of cervezas, if you guys know what I mean, you know, <laughs> but uh, a lot of non-mistakes. <laughs> well, that's, that's when, yeah. that's when language abilities get better. That's the best classroom, right? Ian? <laughs> no, it is for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. But then I again, the theory. Like, I heard the theory. It's a theory. Like uh, what we were talking about just now is that like, they're not going to have like, especially if we just met, you know, like we're being courteous to it towards each other and whatnot. Like they're going to, they're not going to yeah. point out all my mistakes really, even though like I want them to. So that's why it's yeah. better sometimes to have a teacher to actually exactly. say, Hey Marcus, yeah. you well, screwed up. Yeah. That's, and that's when a teacher's worth it. Right. Cause I talk, it does have the language partner feature or say like you'd find somebody to learn Catalan with and maybe they want to improve their English. But oftentimes that like breaks down on both sides because like you might not have like the patience or like, yeah, the audacity, so to speak. But when you pay the money, you hire a teacher, you're going to get that like attention mm -hmm. that you deserve. So, but even yeah. like when we hang out with, with, with some of our friends that don't have English as their first language and they uh -huh. still speak English very well, but sometimes they make small mistakes. Like we're not no. going to correct them, right? No, oh, yeah. no. Because you never want to like come off like... Yes, you don't want to come off like that. You're not there to teach them English. You're there yeah. to have a like, conversation. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But even though like they speak 99.9% .9 correctly, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Every once in a while, they screw something up. And you're not going to be that person to like tell them to... Even though they probably would appreciate that, right? Probably would. Yeah. And, like that's people... that's kind of what I'm what I am with Spanish even though my Spanish is not that good but it's decent enough to like hang out with people. Yeah, and dude. and totally and good. um you know like I feel like some I'm even thinking about doing like Spanish lessons. You know hmm. just have some anal okay. person sit there and evaluate every single word and sentence exactly. that I said. Yeah, there's right? there's always room for improvement at a higher level, of course. Man. And I was just thinking about what Azrin said, right? Cuz when we're talking to Azrin he said like because Azrin Azrin's Spanish level is incredibly high, right? He's essentially yeah. native so, speaking yeah, Spanish, major. but he's still taking Spanish classes on iTalk. Right. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think totally. that's cool. Like I'm, I'm thinking about doing that. So I'm thinking about getting into the iTalk game guys. I'm inspired for sure. I'm inspired. Do it. And I'm going to think a lot about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause like, don't get me wrong. I feel like 
that best point is when you can you're done using like quote unquote like language resources like a textbook or something made for language learning you just start learning from native material but then even sometimes with that just that native material maybe it's not always giving you as much improvement as you think so that's where it is worth it to like yeah get it yeah together to get that higher well level, it's right? that like just hanging out with people that's always really good to just get like practice like a lot uh -huh. of hours essentially because you need hours to, to yeah improve your hours fluidity in. right mm -hmm. it's good for fluidity but for getting everything right mm -hmm. yeah just like yeah, complete accuracy. Yeah. Yep, yep. yeah man but uh dude uh but like I said, you walk out on the street right now, that's part of your classroom right now too, though. Yeah, for sure. For, you. for sure. Right. So that's, for sure, which is great. That's sick. Yeah. But, and that, that's, that's the best way. Man. And it's so, so, that's so what makes it fun. Has there been any like flamenco street singers? Or any I haven't seen them. Not yet. I haven't been out at night, really. Man. I haven't been out at night, really. Okay. Only like a little bit. Yeah. Is that famous Spanish night? I'm probably so like Island. after I'm done here, I'm probably gonna go out, take a walk, and listen to like a podcast or something. Oh, yeah. okay, well, find something cool. It's ten o'clock. Oh, yeah. Ten oh, twelve. Yeah, damn, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Ocho horas. Ocho horas. Ocho horas. Sí, exactamente. I don't know. Maybe I'll yeah. sit down and watch an episode of Cuervos. Ah man, no, there's there's a uh, besides Money Heist, there's Elite. I think it's called. It's got. Uh, oh yeah. It's got Denver and what's Denver's so girlfriend? Oh, okay. In real life, Alice in Park. Uh, yeah, Alice in Park. She's in that too. Yeah, Alice in Park. Nice. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, we're just getting ready to go play some spike ball. It's spike ball, man. <laughs> guys, you spike guys are going ball revolution. Spike ball, eh? That cafe in Spain. Yeah. So no, no, I haven't seen spike ball here. A lot in the oh, states, dude. obviously. But okay, um, well, I'm gonna rep. I'm gonna wrap so what is that? Here. Tell us about. Tell us. Okay, tell I don't know if the camera can see. It's Calgary Roundneck Club, which I actually like. Our buddy Alejandro, the star from episode six, he went out a few times. Like the people in the city, there's just like the Calgary Spike Ball Meetup group or a Facebook group, I should say. And uh, dude, I just went last Sunday to Marta Loop in Calgary, and oh man, there's some players in La Ciudad. Really? Like, <laughs> Yeah, dude. So wicked serves. We're, we're learning lots. Uh, me and Alejandro uh, were signed up for a tournament September 12th. Really? So we've been training with that. Any guesses what our team, team name is? Did I tell you guys our team name? No. No. No what guesses? Is what is it? Los Cholos. Los Cholos. <laughs> yeah, man. Los Cholitos. Me and Alejandro are playing like Cholo, Cholo. And everyone's like, what the hell is a Cholo? <laughs> Wait, who's, on, who's on the team? Me and Alejandro. So you're two. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you're two players on this team. Yeah, yeah, man. Got so it. Got uh, it. It's been an extra. You guys are going. You guys are going the hardest. I think. Yeah, like we've been. Uh, I went Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and we're gonna do that again one more time next week, and then next Saturday is the. Well, I guess yeah, we're playing tonight too. So nice, next Saturday nice. is the tournament. So who's, the who's, who's playing tonight? Uh, Yo, Colo, Alejandro, y, y, Luis. 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 Yeah. Luis. Okay. We're going to go to Got a few. Stanley Park. Stanley Park, the which is where the tournament is next week. So. Boys. Stanley Park boys. in Calgary, not Vancouver. <laughs> boys. That sounds sick. Boy, oh boy. Yeah. So what about Jose? He, he gave up? Or... Josecito? Jose... I know he came out the other night, actually. So I didn't see how he did, but man, there's some, man, there's some good players. So and it's like a cool crowd, right? It's like balls. Uh, it's not really like a jockey sport or nothing. Like it's pretty chill people. Mm -hmm. So uh, really cool crowd. Like uh, the guy's been like, even as he like, he was beating us pretty bad. He like give us tips in between and stuff. Like, <laughs> nice, nice, really nice, nice. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, as, man. As we should speak about it. Speak about it. Speak about it. <laughs> we should uh -huh. probably head out soon. Maybe. Yeah. What's our run? Marks, do you got a running time? I think we're at like an hour. Nice. Yeah, that's pretty solid. Something like so, that. Uh, hey boys, it was yeah, a good man. one. Uh, it was a good one. So, so, so guys, we're gonna. I, what do you guys think? Like every two weeks or something like that? I'm done for. Yeah. yeah what do you guys think? Yeah, we got some guests. Abdu, uh, man, I've been hanging out with Abdu a bit. I was like, dude, you gotta come on the pod here. Yeah, yeah. But I'm gonna be so so to let everybody know, I'm gonna be going hard with uh, yeah, bro. We'll be with Catalan and Spanish. 
Yeah, for so, sure. For sure. There's yeah, gonna be feature a little update. your buddy Nick. Oh yeah. So Come I think on. we were talking about doing Nick and then Abdo. Abdo. Abdo, that'd be sick. Also, uh, I think if you guys I'm give you all the details, it's like now, like so, a collaboration podcast potentially. Here Collab, with, uh, that'd be sick. Uh, English teacher at our my high school. He uh, he does like a literature podcast called Structured Rambling. If people want to check that out, we're talking about doing a translation episode, kind of the art of translation. So more deets on that. All right, that sounds interesting for sure. Yeah. So, oh, and uh, also we were talking about those uh, Quebec people oh, that yeah. are going to be taking around uh-huh. Alberta. We can maybe we can do a podcast. Wait, who are these people? There's just some random Quebecers that I'm going to be like showing around Alberta. <laughs> Why? How'd you, how'd you find them? Because um, do you know Charlie, the guy who used to like organize the French meetup, or he was like run the French meetups at? Teams? No, no, this was before I I started my French career. Oh, okay. Well, he um he's living in Montreal now, and he's got some friends there who are coming to Alberta next month, and he asked nice. if I could like just like show them around. I was like, yeah, of course. Oh man, that sounds sick. Yeah. Qu'est-ce <laughs> Yeah. Oh, also a uh, couple of YouTube guys. So one guy called Language Come Up. I don't know his actual name yet. I should message him. He's kind of got a bit of a YouTube following. He wants to come on. And then nice. also a guy named Seabolt Speaks. He's got a cool channel. A uh, little chatter with him on the Twitters about uh, also coming on. So future, lots of future prospects. That, and like, sounds, I got sick, a ton of that yeah. sounds sick, man. You're oh, doing a great uh, job. And any Catalonias, Catalanias? That... We'll see, man. We'll see. Maybe I'll be yeah, able to, to to find some people here. A little, a little get some little people on for sure. A little oh, yeah. As well. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. So yeah, Lingaholics, sure. episode ten, boys. Right here. Uh, yeah, here we go. All Books. right, this this was a good All one man. for sure. Into the good double digits. Yes. Right. So uh, wait, I think I know. I think I know. Adios. Adiao. Adiao. Adi. Adi. Adiao. 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 No. 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 Adieu. 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 Okay.